And uh, let me just turn there for a minute. Everybody can hear me? Yes. Okay. But before I read that, I'm going to just back up to Matthew chapter 10, where Jesus says, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and as you go preaching, say, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. When Jesus and John the Baptist, uh, when John the Baptist uh, in his ministry and Jesus early on, the message was the gospel of the kingdom. And their message was repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That wasn't a message for the Gentiles, by the way. I just read here from Matthew 10, that was a, that was a message from, or a message to the lost sheep of Israel. It was a message for them. Here's the kingdom, Israel. You want it? Here it is. Here is who the prophets wrote about. Your Messiah, he's here. You believe in him, the kingdom will come. People today will point out that the, um, the kingdom is within you, therefore the kingdom is here. Many Christians will use that, this kingdom now theology. The kingdom is not here in any way, shape, or form, period. The kingdom has been postponed because of the rejection of the nation Israel back 2,000 years ago. When Jesus came and offered them the kingdom, here it is. I offer you the kingdom. Here is the kingdom. It was a legitimate offer. It was a leg legitimate offer. When we come to chapter 11 here in Chorazin, this is what we read here in verse 20. Then, then began Jesus to rebuke the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done because they repented not. Woe unto thee, Chorazin. Woe unto thee, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and in Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, um, which are exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee have been done in so Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for, you, for, the, for thee. At that time Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight, all things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father except the Son, that he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. And then Jesus says this, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and lean on me, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall have find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. A yoke is when an animal is yoked to plow, and only those who have known the yoke will be used, and the one that isn't will be yoked lightly alongside um, the one that is, because we know that Jesus is the one that leads. Now, as Ali said, there's not a, how many Christians come here? There's not a lot in the parking lot. And there's a lot of Christians today that would say, what's that? One hand. One hand. There's a lot of Christians that would say, see, the Jewish nation forsook the Lord, and therefore he's done with them. I think you've heard me say many times already that God's not done with Israel. He's not done with Israel at all. I want you to look at, uh, I'm just going to read a, a, a couple of verses out of chapter 12. Because now when we go to chapter 12 in Matthew, we see the, re see the, here in Chorazim, they didn't believe in what Jesus was teaching and sharing. Neither did they at Capernaum or Bethsaida. And we come into chapter 12, and we see the continuation of that disbelief. Only now it's amongst the Pharisees. And the Pharisees were attributing Jesus' miracles to the workings of Beelzebub, of Satan. And we see at this point here in Matthew 12, the kingdom offer is rejected. And now the kingdom is not canceled, but it's postponed. And then I just want to read to you two verses here out of chapter 12, because it's important. Or not chapter 12, sorry. I want to read to you out of chapter 13, because when we see the rejection in chapter 12 of the leaders, when we come to chapter 13, you remember the eight kingdom parables? These eight kingdom parables are teaching us what the interim period will be like while the kingdom is not canceled, but postponed. 
What's it going to be like on earth after that? I want to read to you just two verses. And one is about the treasure in verse 44. Jesus said again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a treasure hid in a field. Who's the treasure? It's Israel. That's Deuteronomy 14, 2. It's Isaiah 11, verse 9. Or, and, and Exodus 19, verse 5. Israel's the treasure. And Israel was hidden in a field. And then it says, in which uh, when a man found, he came for Israel. It's all from the kingdom. And it says here, and then he hideth. And so the kingdom offers postponed. And we read here at the end of verse 44, and for joy thereof, he went and sold all that he had and buy at that field. Jesus went to die for not only the sins of Israel, but the sins of the entire world. And although he came for Israel the first time and the nation rejected him, he's coming again a second time and they will accept him. And he's going to, and in that meantime, he, he died, right? He died on the cross. But when you come also to the verse 45 and it talks about um, the, the, the pearl of great price. Think of you and I. He also went to die and sold everything he had for you and I. And so God's not done with Israel, although the kingdom offer was rejected. And it's something to remember always when we look at Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11. Because this is something that a lot of Christians overlook. And this is so important. If you remember anything of your whole entire trip here, remember Romans chapter 11, where Paul says in in verse 11, he says, I say then, Speaking about the Jewish people, have they stumbled that they should fall? Fall from God's grace forever and ever and ever? He says, God forbid. But rather, through their fall, think of this, the rejection of Jesus. Think of Matthew 12 by the leaders of Jesus, the rejection. Paul says, through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles. Does that mean that God had plan B? No. Did that mean that the kingdom offer was any less legitimate when he offered Israel the kingdom? No. But God in his sovereignty knows all things, knew exactly that the nation would reject him. And his plan was always plan A. There was never a plan B. Uh Uh-oh, what am I going to do now? It was always a plan A. And so Paul reminds us and says that through the fall of the Jewish nation, Israel, salvation came to the Gentiles. But then I want you to pay attention to verse 12. Paul says, now with the fall of them, be the riches of the world. Oh, do we owe the Jewish people much? Ali, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for the Jewish people, for the word of God, for, for Jesus that came through the Jewish people, and all the technological advances that bless this world. I thank you. But Paul says, now with the fall of them, be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles, How much more their fullness. Don't go away today thinking, ah, those Jews, they they rejected over and over. And yes, they did, but salvation came to you and I through that. But God's got a plan one day. One day God has a plan to bring the nation to salvation. And we see that. And so always remember that God is not finished with Israel. And as we see this as a reminder today, this isn't just for to think of what the rejection of was back in Jesus' day, but think of today of how many people, not only Jewish people, but Gentiles. Think of family and friends that we have and neighbors that reject what Jesus had said. And yet he loves them and he loves them unconditionally and wants to save them, both Jewish people and Gentiles. And so I just think as we look around here today, um, just, just, just remember that not only God loves you, but he loves the Jewish people as well. And he has a great plan for them one day.